What's up, everybody? Hey, so we just got almost a double yield increase from no other than the Lincoln Electric Company. They've been maintaining almost double digit rates of return for their dividend growth over the last 27 years. So before we get into the metrics, I figured it was only appropriate to show you their video that they offer on their website, which is very informative into the company's history. And I know I'm a big history buff, so hopefully you guys enjoy it. I don't own any of the rights or anything to it, but let's take a check and look at it. All right, let's begin. The year was 1895. Young electrical engineer and inventor John Cromwell Lincoln founded the Lincoln Electric Company with $200 and set out to commercialize his latest invention, a direct current electric motor. What started as a spark of ingenuity flickered and gained momentum. In 1907, John brought his brother James into the company and together, the Lincoln brothers launched their first arc welder in 1911. Their brothers shared a commitment to providing innovative, cost-efficient welding solutions and fostered a company guided by the Golden Rule. In 1918, recognizing each other's strengths, James took over day-to-day -day business operations, while John pursued scientific investigation, which led to 55 patents over his lifetime. A born motivator and progressive thinker, James designed Lincoln's incentive management system that develops people, pays for performance, and rewards contributions, and has become a hallmark of the company's success. At the brink of World War I, the United States Army requested welding training for the troops headed into battle, which launched the Lincoln Electric Welding School. The 1920s and 30s saw greater adoption and advancements in arc welding. In 1927, Lincoln introduced the revolutionary Fleet Weld 5 electrode, which catapulted the company through the Great Depression. World War II generated a dramatic expansion in arc welding to support wartime efforts, and the need for the Lincoln Electric Welding School was at its peak, running three shifts a day and graduating 180 welders a month, including over 400 women. New sub-arc welding Sub-arc welding reduced the Liberty ship's assembly to a record 42 days, resulting in the building of over 2,700 Liberty ships over the course of the war. The 1950s and 60s saw Lincoln focused on improving its operational processes with the construction of its new state-of-the-art manufacturing headquarters in Euclid, Ohio, while expanding its products and reach overseas. 1965 marked the end of Lincoln family management of the business with the death of James Lincoln. We will work together for a common end. Every successive president and CEO since has held true to the groundbreaking principles and core values established by the Lincoln brothers. In 1975, the Harvard Business School published a case study on Lincoln's incentive management system, one of Harvard's best-selling publications. The early 1980s tested Lincoln's resilience with a national recession. Although sales dropped almost 40% and the company's guaranteed employment promise was challenged, no one lost their job. Employees took different positions within the company to support sales and promote new products. At the same time, Lincoln Electric increased its distribution network by over 70% and expanded operations to 16 countries. This growth was recognized with the U.S. Presidential E Award for Exporters Mastering Excellence, the first of three presidential awards earned by the company. The 1990s established a new era with computerized welding equipment and new robotic systems. Lincoln also entered the world of plasma and oxyfuel cutting. In 1995, Lincoln celebrated its centennial anniversary and started to trade as a public company. The 2000s marked continued international expansion and growth. In 2009, the Great Recession tested Lincoln Electric once again. 
Although sales were down 30%, Lincoln still launched a record 108 new products to spur growth. By 2012, the company began to rapidly expand its automation portfolio by acquiring 10 companies in five years. The acquisition of Air Liquide Welding doubled the size of the company's European business. And by the end of the decade, Lincoln opened its state-of-the-art welding technology and training center and launched its new large-scale additive manufacturing business. With 125 years of industry leadership, Lincoln Electric is better positioned than ever before. Known as the welding experts around the globe, the company remains at the forefront of technology, guided by the golden rule, and committed to operating by a higher standard to build a better world. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. So let's dig into the metrics right now on the financials on it. All right, so the Lincoln Electric Company, their dividend yield right now is about a 1.6% starting yield. But that dividend growth yield is just about almost 10%. They just actually raised it today. And uh, it has stellar growth. And if we look at the growth, but before we do that, also the shares traded about $140 for today's price. And then the market cap is just over eight billion dollars and they are in multiple markets across the entire globe so heavily diverse right and they do all kinds of different equipment from welding equipment to cutting to uh, apparatuses safety everything so they're very diverse that payout ratio is only 38 percent that forward p is even looking better at only 31 percent and we can look and we can see that dividend streak without any reductions has been 27 years so they've been able to maintain that even through the recession. And if we look back, they came out with, you know, over a hundred new products through the recession as well uh, to combat, you know, increasing sales and everything else because they had a decrease in sales during that by 30%. So this is obviously a company that is very innovative and they've been around for over 125 years. So they have a great record on them. Now we can look back and we can also see that that dividend growth over the last 20 years has been a stellar 10% compounded year over year. That's per year. So that's the equivalent to somebody saying, here's a 10% raise every year. And we look on their website as well, and we can see for their investor relations that their goal is to also shoot for a 10% CAGR. So that's a dividend growth uh, rate, that 10%. And then a total percentage return of almost 15%. So. We can look over here on this chart as well. And I plugged and played with the company, right? And I went all the way back to 1996. So just about, uh, excuse me, actually went back even further. I tried to go all the way back even to 1994. So 1994 is when this metric actually starts. So we're at about 27 years on this chart, roughly. And I did it from today's date to you know, 1994 of today's date, so October 19th. And we can see here that a $100,000 investment in this company over that course of those years would have had an annualized rate of return of 14.54% with dividends reinvested. So just about that 15% goal is almost achieved with what the company said. So they put their mouth where their money is. So it's very realistic. And so investors would definitely have been paid very handsomely from this, right? And so obviously your dividend yield also would be pretty insane as well because your cost, your yield on cost would be far less than the value of your portfolio today. So now let's take a look. They just raised it even in one of the greatest, uh, you know, social and economic times, right? With the COVID uh, and basically, you know, with the pandemic and that's 9.8%. So that's amazing. Now, we can look here and we see, like I said, 27 years, that annual payout is $2.24 and it's paid quarterly, so four times a year. And then we can see here that their valuation is on par with the industrial sector average, which is about 21.4. So actually this company is fairly valued uh, for the stock market today anyway. So it's not way overvalued or anything considering this company brings a lot to the table. And then I always like to take a look at the earnings, right? And we already know that the 
the forward PE and payout ratio is 31%. So that's an improvement over the 38% over this past year. And then we can see their free cash flow uh, payout ratio is also nice and low, only, you know, 39%. So that's a good metric as well. So there's a lot of room to grow that dividend and continue that 10% CAGR growth rate. We can see the earnings per share has increased at a good rate over the years. And we can see the free cash flow has also done the same and followed suit. We can also see that the earnings per share has also increased, even with all these acquisitions that they've obtained over the last few decades. And we can also come down and take a look at the shares outstanding. Shares outstanding has gone down by over 20 million. And so that is amazing because that speaks to volume. So anybody who owns shares in this company, their shares have only become more valuable with the company buying back its own shares. So that's a dual-edged sword for dividend investors. Because sometimes we'd like to see that paid out, but considering this company has been paying out a double yield growth rate for their dividend raises year over year, I don't see an issue with that. Obviously management is good priorities. And then we can see their total sales is increased uh, at a fairly you know steady rate over time and then that return on equity is a nice beautiful 39 percent and we can also take a look and we can see that the operating margin is above our metric for what we'd like to see and then i can come down here and make sure that the interest coverage of the company is at what it needs to be to be able to basically have extra cash on hand and we can see it's more than double what we would look for in this industrial market. So that is a good sign. So all in all, Lincoln Electric, ticker symbol LECO, is a great company to own in your dividend portfolio and even growth portfolio because we're having almost a combined annual growth year over year over the long term of about 14.5%. Companies aiming for even 15%, and I believe they can pace that going forward just with all the acquisitions and then also all of the building of new buildings and everything else that's going to take place over the coming decades. So definitely a lot of room for this company to grow. And as you can see, shareholders that invested in them 27 years ago are sitting very handsomely today as well. And I believe that that stock price over the long term again in the decades to come is only going to increase substantially and for the income investors that's going to go up a lot as well if you invest in them today for their dividend rate as well so i am long on this stock and i just added it to my portfolio actually after doing substantial research on it i actually am a consumer of lincoln electric goods as well with my welder and everything so i highly recommend you guys take a look at them check them out and i hope you guys enjoyed today's video stay tuned for more please leave a uh, comment also, share this with all your friends and colleagues. Drop a like if you like this, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.